turn with me tonight in your Bibles to 2 Kings, 3rd chapter, verses 13 through 17, and verse 20. 2 Kings, 3rd chapter, verses 13 through 17, and I think we're going to read verse 20 also. And what I'd like to do is set the stage for this passage. So here there were three kings who came to an alliance of sorts. The king of Judah, king of Israel, and the king of Edom to fight the Moabites. And when they went to approach Moab and the Moabites from the desert of Edom, And after seven days of marching, the army ran out of water. And Jehoram, the king of Israel, immediately blamed God. And Jehoshaphat, the good king, king of Judah, knew better and asked God through the prophet Elisha what they should do. And this is Elisha, not Elijah. And verse 13 says this, And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What what have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father, and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the land of Moab. Elisha said here, he looked at him and he was a bit indignant. And he looked at him and he said, Go ask your father and your mother's prophets, the pagan prophets. Ask the false gods. And Jehoram said, No, it was the Lord that called the three kings together. And 14 says, And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. Elisha responded and said, If it weren't for my great respect for the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, the good king, I would not pay any attention to you you would be on your own. Quite a conversation that they were having here. And 15 says this. Elisha says, but now bring me a minstrel. Minstrel is someone who plays the harp. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. A minstrel. Someone who can prepare me with music. Someone to help me better hear from God. The use of music, this request here by Elisha, the use of music was associated with worship and praise. And it's done that throughout the Bible. Music can create a great atmosphere of calming, of soothing, of quieting, of concentration, of focus, preparing the mind and the heart for God's presence. Think about how we feel as God moves in this place. When the music is anointed and the words of a song or the music touch our hearts, it puts us in a frame of mind and an atmosphere of getting things out of our mind and getting our mind on Him and our heart on Him. I believe Elisha's saying here, I need to calm myself. 
I'm upset with them. They're asking me to do this. And they're not serving. And they're not doing. And they're going to prophets that are idols. But it was a time, I believe, of spiritual preparedness to get into God's presence and receive the revelation that God had for them. It's to put our mind in a place of receiving God. Beautiful music. Maybe you're at home before the service and you turn on gospel music. And what does it do? It soothes us. It gets us in the mindset. It takes all the things and the stuff that we've been thinking about and pushes it away. Thank you, Lord. It clears our mind. It prepares us. And at the end of 15, it says, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And 16, and this is a key verse, and it says, and he said, thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Profound. It's a prophecy from God. The armies were completely out of water. The men and the animals were dying of thirst. They were going to be, if they made it to Moab and the Moabites, they would have been soundly defeated. And I'm sure there was lots of complaining going on. And they were all in a, in a weakened condition. They were been marching for seven days in a dry and thirsty land. This army was absolutely desperate. And what does Elisha say? What does God tell him? And he said, thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. And Elisha's probably saying this, Lord, is this really what you want me to say? These men are tired. They're weak. And you want them to do what? Dig ditches. Oh. Maybe they thought he was crazy. Dig ditches. Why? For what purpose? They were tired. They were weak. Super thirsty. They were dying. And the ground was probably like concrete. And God was saying, I want you all to dig ditches. Think about that. And not only to dig a ditch, one ditch, what does he say here? He says, make this valley full of ditches. And not a few shallow ditches. Start digging lots of ditches. I want this valley to be full of ditches. That's what God told him. And God's speaking, dig when it's hard. Dig when you can't see anything. Dig when you can't feel it. Dig when you're convinced that nothing is going to happen. Brothers and sisters, it's about preparation. This message is about preparation. It's about obedience. It's about trusting God absolutely when everything else seems wrong. It's about obedience to Him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. It's about faith. It's about doing what He tells us to do. It's about believing God, especially when we don't see anything. And furthermore, verse 17 says, For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. What? What's this all about? 
Lord, if, you're gonna send, if we're going to dig ditches and you're going to send us this water, then there needs to be a storm. And what does he tell them? He says, oh no. He said, ye shall not see wind or rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water that you might drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. God didn't say he was going to send a storm. That's what you would expect. And he tells him this. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is an amazing prophecy. And I'm sure that Elisha may have wondered, what is God having me say here? There's not going to be any rain or wind or storm no indication of water coming. That's believing God when you don't see it in front of you. You see, as human beings, we like to touch things and feel things and see things before we'll believe it, right? He's saying no. I'm telling you. He was speaking to what God was giving him, Elisha was. It was about doing the impossible. It was about doing a miracle. But before he could do that miracle, what did he ask him to do? Dig the ditches. Digging the ditches. It's a symbol of preparation. Preparation was absolutely necessary before God would work. It was about obedience. It was about making room for God. Amen? You dig the ditches, even under these com conditions. I will supply the water. Praise God. So what happened? Verse 20 says, And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And not only that, they went on to defeat the army of Moab. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You see, God wants to give us much more than what we ask. A miracle. God wants to do a miracle in each one of our lives. Even when it looks like it's impossible. Thank you, Lord. But he asks us to do what? Prepare. Prepare. Dig the ditches. Amen? This is a beautiful word of God. This is his amazing truth. And it's alive and well today. And it applies to us. It's time for us, each one of us, and this church to do what? Prepare for what God has for us. It's about you and I doing what? Digging ditches. When it doesn't seem like it makes any sense. Praise God. He's telling us today that in times of desperation, and we have some of those, when all hope is gone, when we have all but given up, as the armies did here, where there's nowhere to turn, that he is in control. And that nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. And as we wait for the answer from God, we have to prepare. Satan is here. We've, we preached on this a couple of weeks ago. Satan has come to, to kill, <clears throat> steal, and to destroy. He's here to take our families away from us. He's here 
to send our kids and our grandkids in, a, in his direction. But God's saying, oh no, those are my children. It's a time of expectation from our God. What is God expecting from you? Do you know? For us, it's a time to begin to dig ditches. A time of preparation. A time to make room for the answer that God is going to send. Let me ask you a question. Is your life filled with ditches? Have you been digging ditches? Are you prepared for what God is going to send you? You see, we like to prepare by asking God for these things. God, we want to see a great revival in this church. Don't we want to see a great revival in this church? Amen. God, we want to see the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this place. God, we want to be on fire for you. But what does it take? We've got to dig those ditches in preparation for that. Praise God. Think about all the rain that we got yesterday. Tremendous amount. And I watched the rain. And in many cases it was raining so hard that the water wouldn't saturate in to the ground. It was running off. It was being wasted. It was going, it was coming down. We have a little hill in the back. And it was coming down that hill and going down the driveway into the street and into the sewer. It's wasted. God's saying the same thing here. We've got to have preparation. We've got to have those ditches dug. Amen? Praise God. The water would be wasted. It couldn't be collected for later. And this relates to us. Prepare yourself tonight, he's saying. Prepare yourself for what he's going to send us. Amen? Isn't that a little bit exciting? Isn't that a lot exciting? Well, Brother Steve, you're kind of getting out there. Oh, no. God has great things that he wants to send us. It says it in his word. Praise God. He wants us in a state of readiness. Well, how do I get ready? Dig those ditches. What does that mean? Be ready. Dig your ditches. Be ready for what God's going to do. Are we prepared when God is going to move? When God moves on this place, we need to be ready. We need to be ready and expecting and accepting what he has for us. Great and mighty things. Or are we living in the negative? Oh, you know, it's been a long time and nothing's going to happen and it's the same old, same old and it's, you know, just going to keep going. What do you think God believe, thinks about that? When we have a negative attitude that nothing's going to happen. Put my mind in a place where I have expectations of what my God is going to do. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Are we prepared when God moves? Are we ready for what God is going to do in our families? You have issues in your families? I think we, if I ask you to raise your hand, I think we'd all raise our hands. Right? Amen. We all have problems. What's God going to do in our families? He's going to do miraculous things. But let's get, let's get ready. Let's get prepared. Let's get prayed up. Let's seek his face. He's not a genie in a bottle. Uh, 
Fix my family's God. Oh no! It's about me preparing for that and expecting that. Oh God. Just like the ten foolish virgins. Five were prepared. Five were ready. Five were not. Five were shut out. I don't want to get shut out. Amen? When God sends his blessings, when he moves, I want to be ready. Don't be caught unprepared. Dig those ditches. Brother, that's a really hard ditch. Did you ever dig a ditch or really dig a ditch? It's hard. And when the ground's hard, man, it's like concrete. It's tough. It's really hard. And sometimes we give up. It's like that in our spiritual life. I'm not making any progress, Lord. I'm, I've only gotten an inch dug here in our spiritual life. Oh, no. You keep going. You keep pressing towards the kingdom. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Be prepared. We want to have dug those ditches, ready to accept the spiritual blessings he's going to send. I love this word tonight. When he gave it to me, I said, thank you, Lord, because it indicated to me that I had some work to do, that I had to get my shovel, my spiritual shovel out. And do what? Dig those spiritual ditches. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Are we being proactive or reactive? Ask yourself the question. There's quite a difference. Proactive is to begin digging your ditches now when it doesn't seem possible, when it th- seems like things are just too hard. Because God's going to send us great blessings. And reactive is digging your ditches when the water is already here. And sometimes you can't keep up with it. You can't catch up with it. Or it's muddy, if I put it in the physical sense. And that's the same way in our spiritual lives. We need to be focused and intentional about God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Serving God, excuse what I say here a little bit. Serving God is not serving Him by the seat of our pants. When things come up, I'll take care of it. I'll do it off the top of my head. Oh no. God expects much more from us than that. Dig those ditches ahead of time. I love what he says here. Make this valley full of ditches. Make this valley full of ditches. Amen? Make your lives full of ditches. Praise God. We need to make a conscious decision that we're... First of all, trusting in God and believing He is the God of the impossible and the God that's going to answer our prayers and the God that's going to send us blessings. Do you all believe that? Praise God. Bring in our loved ones. He's going to give us great and mighty things. He wants to give us great and mighty things. Live a life of expectancy and blessed assurance. Live a life of preparation. Begin digging the ditches in the valley right now. As you go home in your cars tonight, begin to think about digging ditches in your spiritual life. Readying yourself, preparing yourself for what God has, because it's going to be amazing. Be prepared to accept what he has for us. Claim the victory as we preached the other night. And once we dig the ditches, wait for the victory. Once you begin to dig the ditches, get up in the morning, the next morning, 
and look to see if those ditches were filled. Because God's promised to fill them. Amen? Brothers and sisters, desperation. Desperation brings on preparation. And can I say this? And I don't mean to offend anyone. Are we desperate tonight? Are we truly desperate for what God has for us? This isn't just a Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday night thing. It's about God every day. Amen? I need to get myself, I'll speak for myself, in a state of desperation where I want nothing more than God. Praise God. And I'll say this about myself. I've become fat and happy. What are you talking about, brother? I've become satisfied with just a little bit. I'll dig a little bitty ditch. One is good enough. That's all I need. And, And hopefully God will fill it. Oh, no! That's not what he's saying here. What does he say? Make this valley full of ditches. I love that. Dig that ditch. Dig those ditches. Praise God. Okay, pastor. I'll dig a ditch, just a little one. That's all I really need. Oh, no. I'm good. No, you're not good. You think you're good. Be careful of what God is speaking to us here tonight. And dig the ditches not only for you, but for your family and your loved ones and others that you're speaking to, co-workers, neighbors. How about this? Dig some ditches for your enemies and don't wish that they drown in it. Because we're to pray for our enemies too. Dig ditches for all. Dig ditches for this church. Tell others about God. Get yourself ready. I need to get myself ready in prayer. Seeking His face. In praise and worship. Are we waking up in the morning thinking about what what we're going to do today at work? That's what I did for 40 years. How about this before you think about that? Oh God, I love you so much. I'm desperate for you. I'm hungry for you. I want to do your will today. The rest of the things will fall into place. Praise God. The church needs to find itself in a state of desperation. Desperation for the work of God. For a great outpouring of His Holy Spirit. A great revival. Get ready for it. Prepare for it. Dig the ditches and get ready for it. And I was thinking about this as I was preparing. In the last 25 years, think about this. This country has gone through Many major things. The 911 attack. The coronavirus, the pandemic that lasted two or three years, killed many. 911 attack killed many. And just recently, former president shot. And, it, you know, I'll say this it's a time that I really believed after these type of things happened that the church would return to the Lord, that the people would begin to return to the Lord. But guess what? It's a temporary thing. We all thought, man, the church is just going to come, everybody's going to come close to God because of all these things that he's putting in front of us. Not so much. Find a place 
of desperation. A place where we would begin digging those ditches. A new dedication to serving the Lord and prioritizing Jesus in our lives. And I'm just not sure that this is happening. But you know what? It can happen here. Amen? Do you want it to happen here? Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Start digging the ditches. Get your spiritual shovels out and start digging the ditches in your own lives, personally, individually, and for the church. I like to walk up and down these aisles and see all kinds of ditches, ready to catch what God has. Amen? Thank you, Lord. It's time, brothers and sisters, it's time for us to begin digging ditches and filling the valley full of those ditches so we might receive all that he has. God is good. I'm over the top excited after he gave me this message because I know what I have to do. I know that I have a lot of work to do. I know that it's a preparation time for this guy. It's a time for me to dig ditches. Amen? I'm excited for what God has spoken to us tonight. God is good. Amen? And I am ready. I am more than ready. And I'll get a big shovel and we can dig some big ditches if you want. I'll dig a ditch with you. But I'm ready to dig ditches. Amen? May the name of the Lord be praised. Thank you, Lord.